Welcome to the second segment of the Procurement Reset Roundtable. In this segment, we will discuss a few of the top supplier and procurement capabilities, which are a high priority for the business leaders. Since um, organizational objectives keep evolving in strategic sourcing behaviors, I'd like to ask Pervy, what are a few of the top supplier procurement capabilities which business leaders can see as the prioritized needs of the evolving business requirements for sourcing transformations? Am I saying your name right, by the way? Pervy, yeah, no, you got it right. <laughs> thank you. Okay, good. Thank you uh, so much. Of all, I was worried. You. Yeah, no. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for this panel. I think there's so, some amazing insights that, you know, Don and Stephen and Vijay have brought. Uh, you know, it's it's fascinating to me. I mean, I'm in agreement with Vijay and Don that sort of AI is our future, right? And if we look at our functions, strategic sourcing, procurement, right, vendor management, all these functions, what I find is, right, we were very process and compliance driven in the past. Historically, that's sort of how we came about, right? But we need to get past that now and say, how do we become more technologically driven, right? It's not about being processed, but you need technology, you need you need partnerships, and you have to think like a business, right? If you can think like a PNL, if you can think about it from a point of view of how do I how do you drive the value to the company and what that value determination by the company is, if you can translate that procurement and strategic sourcing can play a huge role. They have a seat at the table, right? What's fascinating to me is as we transform as leaders, we're gonna to have to be very mindful of looking at how do we evolve our people, right? Because our people are used to the entirety of, you know, let's follow the process. It's a policeman that mentality. And we have to shift them to thinking about it from a technology data-driven decision-making, right? And and I, I'm so encouraged, um, you know, I think the team's put it appropriately, the ecosystem that's been built over the last couple of years because of COVID-19, I'm so excited to see different products coming together that perhaps, you know, in the past just never would have seen light of day. There were no investments made on it. So I'm just so encouraged. I, I think we have an opportunity to lead as a business leader versus just a support function um, if we embrace and uh, embrace all of these changes. I totally concur Pervy, um, with what you conveyed. It indeed acts as a refresher for technology enthusiasts and transformation experts to appreciate that all the technology landscape can achieve to reimagine procurement supply chain mechanisms in the consistently changing dynamics that we have today, especially with the pandemic. So thank you. Uh, next, I'll ask Paul for some of his similar opinions for tele from a telecommunications perspective, since this is the uh, age of high speed internet and mobile transformation. So Paul, in your opinion, how do top pro procurement and supply chain needs uh, have to evolve for business leaders since the end consumer wants their data and their insights on real-time basis and telecommunication sourcing is uh, network is orientated and they have their own ecosystem challenges. Now, from a sourcing perspective, <laughs> I mean, telecom is one of the greatest connectors for this, especially in the COVID age that we're facing today. I think in our industry and what we actually work on, there's, um, what COVID has really taught us, especially with the changes and disruptions in the global supply chain, is that there's still a huge reliance on manual processes. And I think there's huge opportunity to modify that going forward. But today there's still a lot of the companies that I'm talking with on a regular basis. It's, it's amazing, major industry leaders. Um, it's It still amazes me how in a fully automated world that they had prior to COVID, how actually, for lack of a better phrase, dumbstruck they are today because all their automated systems are actually failing. And there's a lot of a skill set in the sourcing and supply chain that doesn't really exist as they've been forced to uh, go back to more of a manual process. And it just kind of leads me to believe that there's still some failure in where we are with the AI like there's still more room for development. I don't think it's not, you know, it's to walk away from. I just think there's a lot more on the development platforms that need to be evolved to be able to handle this type of a global crisis, which is probably on par with something we haven't seen since probably the first or second world war in terms of global disruptions. So it's, um, 
I still think we have a long way to go. If I look at a lot of the companies and from a telecom perspective, you know, again, we're the glue that allows people to uh, communicate. And so really appreciate that. Um, but there's still a lot of challenges just from pure supply chain and the basics that seem to be failing today as we all kind of scramble to uh, put it back together. Does that make sense? To you, Christopher? Yes, Paul, thank you very much. I, I think I totally concur. I think we're going back a little bit into the ways of maybe, you know, things used to be when the supply chain wasn't as just in time as it is nowadays to being, you know, kind of the previous generation. And a lot of that technology and know-how needs to come back and be built into the AIs. So I couldn't agree with more. Great insight. Uh, two different industries, two different um, mode of customer perspectives now. I'd like to take the, take the same question to Greg, who has uh, an amalgamation of technology solution organization and the end user um, organization. So um, Greg, how do you um, see the sourcing and procurement needs evolving for the continuous supply chain transformation that's going on post COVID? Thanks uh, for the inclusion in the esteem panel. Uh, good to see a number of you again. Christopher, great question. Um, you know, when we look to invest in the procurement sourcing function, we look to three buckets generally, uh, technology, people, process policy, process policy being, you know, the last bucket. Procurement is underinvested. Companies have underinvested in uh, technology. Um, you look at the, uh, the approach that we've taken to invest in our space and generally it's from a sweet approach and it has shifted over the last several years, and I think actually accelerated by the pandemic into more of a best of breed technology approach, because we recognize that a lot of the suite providers, you know, the big, uh, I won't mention names, but the big companies who have Indian P2P or source to settle solutions, haven't adopted technology to the extent that uh, is needed in the market. In, in commerce today around AI, machine learning, natural language processing. So you have best of breed uh, companies such as what Don described coming into the market to fill that niche. I think to Paul's point also, we've underinvested in our people. Um, the people that we've put in leadership roles, in strategic roles, we haven't invested in them from a soft skills perspective and the pandemic has uh, stressed that need um, working in virtual environments, you know, the so-called great resignation with worker shortages, you know, protocols restricting access to facilities uh, as well as access to the suppliers. So a number of factors in play, but fundamentally in my mind, it comes down to technology. Um, you know, we need to automate process. We need to, to leverage uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence, natural language processing. There's a number of companies out there that are doing it today. I, I believe at some point um, sourcing, as an example, uh, will automate, it's called autonomous sourcing. Think of the, uh, the Tesla, the autonomous driving vehicle. We'll get to a point where we'll um, bifurcate or segregate spin based on criticality and the non-strategic so-called tail spin. We'll just simply use technology to autonomously source uh, the tailspin. And it's here today. There are companies doing it. I won't mention names, but uh, it, it, in my mind, it's all about deploying your resources in a strategic way and leveraging technology to address the non-strategic. Very good. Well, thanks, Greg, Paul, and uh, Purvi for that highly enriching uh, conversation. I'm sure that the perspectives that you have brought on the divergent needs of procurement and supply side sourcings uh, will help orientate the business leaders globally towards procurement transformations. And I personally can relate to uh, the technology and the people and the processes that were discussed because we're just now at HCL putting our own supply chain technology um, in place to help with some of the um, activities from the uh, pandemic that have come up. So totally concur with uh, that perspective. So thank you.